Hey guys, my name is Neil and welcome to Neil Workshop Zone. So in this episode, we are going to be talking about database. So our Java topic or subject has ended. We have made like 18 episodes at this point. So if you haven't checked them out, the link is in the description for the full playlist. So as soon as you click there, you will be uh, greeted to a list of 18 episodes. So if you want to learn about basic Java, click the link in the description. So anyways, what is database management system? Because today's topic is about DBMS. So, what is DBMS? But before we learn about DBMS, let us learn about what is data. So we use this word a lot, but what is data? Data is any sort of information that is stored in computer memory, which can later be used for applications or for a client, etc. For example, um, let us take a telephone book. Even though this is not an example because data can be only stored in computer memory, let's just take it as an example to make it more clear for you. So, in a telephone book, we have sorted the data, uh, or in this case, the uh, numbers, in pages of like, in, you know, in the ways of pages, and in those pages, you have rows and columns which indicate uh, whose number it is, uh, you know, and what is the number, etc. And if you want a more um, scientific explanation, um, imagine you open up a new account on Amazon. So as soon as you open the account, um, your account name, your name, your email address and your mobile number immediately goes on to this huge list of databases um, which we'll learn in, in the next five seconds um, into this huge list of databases where you know you can see your data among all these other lists in an organized manner. So anyways, now that we learn about what is data, um, what is database? Database is a systematic collection of data which is stored also in computer memory and allows manipulation of data. Databases make data management easy. So, if we are talking about what is database, database basically stores the data in the form of a spreadsheet uh, similarly. So, there are several rows and columns and indexes and uh, tables in which the database uh, stores the data. And if you don't know what a table is, a table is a 2D structure which contains several rows and columns. So now let us talk about data a little bit more before we learn about, um, you know, how do we manage databases and what is database management system. So um, data in simple words, if you still did not understand what is data, because data is really important in this whole concept of database. Uh, data, in simple words, could be any facts related to you. For example, um, your name, your height, your weight, your age, this all are data related to you. And if you want a more scientific term, data are the small um, items between the rows and columns, which are also called cells, um, you know, which helps them, which helps the row or column indicate therein what is the row or column um, dedicated to. So now let's move on to the database. So database, in a simple word, is data about data. So it basically is telling data uh, about your data which have saved, basically like metadata. So now, now that we learn about what is data and database generally, let us learn about the different types of databases. So to, you have to host a database or create a database, and to make them, you can download um, any sort of software, such as MySQL, Microsoft Access, um, SQLite, uh, etc. And there are a lot more. And so when you're creating a database, you can access it, manipulate it, de delete a database, or create a new database. But when you want a computer to do all the stuff, you can install a software that uh, manages the databases uh, from the computer side. Now the, you know, the managing software which I'm talking about is standard than DBMS which stands for Database Management System, which is in the word itself. So, now that we learn about uh, database and data, let us uh, learn about what is DBMS. The Database Management System helps us manage um, the database in an order. So, uh, for example, imagine you have this um, huge list of um, databases and imagine you have this huge company that you run this huge list of databases because you know, a database can show just infinite amount of details or data. So you make this 
um, different different databases and to manage them, you can just select every single database and access it and add it as soon as it is coming. So you instead um, use DBMS database management system to you know manage the data uh, to access it to manipulate the data etc. So now that we learn about what is database, data, and DBMS, let us learn about the architecture of database management system. So database management system um, is used for a lot of things. Like sometimes it's used for huge companies like Google and sometimes it's used for the simple stuff just in your computer. So to learn about the database management system, there are three main types of architecture. There are actually four, um, but we'll be only talking about three because we'll talk about the three main. So let's learn about the three types of architecture of database management system. Um, I said this a lot in my job videos, but if you're a newcomer to this channel, I'm sorry for my handwriting. So, there are three types uh, of architecture in database management system. First type, second type, and third type. So first, let's learn about the first type. So first type um, consists of a client, which is the user asking for the database or not for the entire database, for the data from a database in a single computer we didn't understand what this is let me give you an example for example, let me tell you about um, a game so in a game um, the assets or the files of the game are stored in a folder uh, in a systematic order so when you're playing the game and you're like um, you complete a level, you're like, I want the next level, enter. So then it goes to the file, loads the, um, you know, takes it where is the level, brings it to inside your game, and then levels it up and loads it, and then you start playing it. So this is database inside your own computer, and you're asking in your own computer for a database. So this is first tier. Now, let's talk about second tier. Also, um, so I kept this arrow mark, which if you are wondering what it means, means that it gives the database and the database also gives it back to the client, you know, the data. Let's start the database in a cylindrical order, so you know, you don't get confused. So this is second tier. So many clients are asking for a database at the same time or multiple times and the database is giving it back. Now this contains a little problem which we'll learn in like the next uh, 10 seconds or so. So the clients are asking for data from the database but compared to first tier, this isn't happening from an, just a computer. This is happening from somewhere else. Like for example, this database is situated in somewhere else. Um, huge computer and these clients are from different areas asking for um, you know the data from the database for example um, second thing is nowadays used in Indian Railways or ISCTC app um, this is a weird example to say but um, um, you'll understand why so the client over here is asking for data from the database in case you cannot see this is a database okay so this is a database and the client is asking for data from the database. 
and their base is going in bed. So what happens is, um, imagine you book the train and you want to see when the, you know, the, when the train is coming. So you're taking it, when is the train coming? And, you know, you, the, like the database takes information, processes it, um, gets data from, um, takes the data, processes it in a form in which the client can see it, um, which is in the machine code, and gives it back. So the client is asking for data, the database is taking the data, like not taking data, taking the request, and then turning it into binary form so that it will make itself understand what it is, then it is turning um, that into this machine code and sending it back to the client so that the client can understand what the database is talking about. So in ICDC, you check if a train has come or not, um, it checks if the train has come or not, and you know you get the information that the train has already went away. So that is second tier. And the problem with second tier is that it is easy to hack and it is also really easy to become an overload database and you know the whole app getting hanged. So because when multiple clients are asking for different different data from the database, it must do all this process as as you know as fast as possible and give it back to the clients, which could be a really big problem. And the problem with security is that anyone can directly hack the database and since there isn't any layer protecting it it could easily get hacked. And this is called the presentation layer, just in case you were wondering. And this is the data layer. The more you know. So, this is a problem with second tier. But if you're asking them why is ISCT using, you know, ISCTC using it, instead of, you know, changing in the third tier, it's because um, there are a lot less users on, you know, the ISCTC error. Because a lot of people, um, just directly go to the railway station, book the tickets and go to the train and a really less amount of people, you know, have the app and check if the train has come or not. So, there are a lot less clients, so it becomes easy for the database to, um, you know, work it and send the data back. But sometimes it still may cause a problem. So now, let's move on to third tier. So this is third tier. So now that you see all of these clients, you may think that um, there's no way that this is going to get, um, you know, easy for the database. But there is a way. And another layer, known as the application layer. Um, so let us wrap this up to show you how space. So here you have the application layer, which if you're wondering what it is, it takes the clients, it processes it, and asks the database uh, what the client wants, and then it just gives it to um, the application layer, it processes it back in the machine code, and sends it back to the client. Um, there is a whole, um, you know, a whole huge another way, like APIs and stuff, but we'll learn that in a future episode, um, but until now, so it sends it back. So this reduces the work of database and splits it equal into two halves. So the application layer takes, uh, takes uh, care of some and the database takes care of some uh, data. So it becomes easy. And these are used in like, really huge companies or in really huge games. Um, when, for example, imagine there are multiplayer games, online multiplayer games like Among Us or stuff. 
and when they're playing that there are different players coming so it must have this huge database from where the levels are getting loaded um, or from where the you know the game characters are getting loaded etc it may happen from the host but sometimes there's also this huge databases from where the information gets pulled so this is first year second year third year there is still a lot of things to talk about in databases like types of databases and stuff but we'll just leave it here we'll talk about them in the next episode so anyways hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to like share subscribe hit the notification bell so don't miss out any new videos and that's the folks and see you in the next one